Hi everyone, how are you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now this morning I've come to the um, memorial site where the memorial um, stones are for Mark Bolan, of course. He of T-Rex and Glamrock and everything else. But I'll tell you a little bit more about him real soon. Uh, if you like this video today, please give it a little thumbs up. Um, just inside London, so not too far to come today. Well, an hour and a half, it's not too bad, is it? <laughs> and make sure you leave your comments down below. Um, let me know what was your favorite Mark Boland track, T-Rex track, um, any memories you have about him growing up, whether you listen to his music now, if you're a newcomer, anything like that. And uh, yeah, let me know down below. Let's get on with it, shall we? Mark Bolan, born Mark Field, 30th of September, 1947 to the 16th of September, 1977 was an English musician, singer and songwriter. He was one of the pioneers of the glam rock movement in the early 70s with his band T-Rex. In 1964, Bolan met his first manager, Geoffrey Delaroy Hall, and recorded a slick commercial track backed by session musicians called All At Once, a song very much in the style of his youthful hero, Cliff Richard, which was later released posthumously by Danielle's and Karen Willans in 2008 as a very limited edition seven inch vinyl. After the original tape recording was passed on to them by Delaroy Hall, this track is one of Bolan's first professional recordings. Bolan began his first serious romantic relationship with Teresa Whitman in 1965. The song Hot Love was written about her. They broke up in 1968 when Bolan met June Ellen Child. The pair immediately fell in love and moved into a flat together after only knowing each other for a few days. They married on the 30th of January 1970. She was a former secretary to his then managers, Black Hill Enterprises, also the managers of another of his heroes, Sid Barrett, whom June dated. She was also influential in raising her new husband's profile in the music industry. Boland's relationship with June was to... He engaged in several affairs over the course of their marriage, including one with singer Marsha Hunt in 1969, and another with artist Barbara Nessin, while recording in America in 1971. The couple separated in 1973 after June found out about Bolan's affair with his back and singer Gloria Jones. After Bolan's death, June revealed that she had undergone multiple abortions during their marriage because she believed Bolan was not yet mature enough to father at the time. In 1971, the band's record label, Fly, released the electric warrior track Jeepster without Bolan's permission. Outraged, Bolan took advantage of the timely lapsing of Fly Records contract and left for EMI, who gave him his own record label, the T-Rex Wax Co. Its bag and label featured an iconic head and shoulders image of Bolan. Despite the lack of Bolan's endorsement, Jeepster peaked at number two in the UK. In 1972, he reached two more UK number ones with Telegram San and Metal Guru, taken from the slider and two number twos in Children of the Revolution and Solid Gold Easy Action. In the same year, he appeared in Born to Boogie, a documentary by Ringo Starr about T-Rex, including a concert filmed at London's Wembley Empire, Pool, in March 1972. Mixed in were surreal scenes shot at John Lennon's mansion in Ascot and a session with T-Rex, joined by Ringo Starr, on a second drum kit and Alton John on piano. At this time, T-Rex record sales accounted for about 6% of total British domestic record sales. The band was reportedly selling 100,000 records a day, However, no T-Rex single ever became a million seller in the UK, despite many gold discs and an average of four weeks at the top per number one hit. No T-Rex record was certified until 1985, as the record company has to pay for it, which Bolands did not in the 1970s. Boland took to wearing top hats and feather boas on stage, as well as putting drops of glitter on his cheekbones. Stories are conflicting about his inspiration for this. Some say it was introduced by his personal assistant, Shilita Secunda. Although Boland told John Pigeon in a 1974 interview on Radio 1 that he noticed the glitter on his wife June Child's dressing table prior to a photo session and casually daubed some of it on his face there and then. Other performers and their fans soon took up variations of this idea. The glam era also saw the rise of Boland's friend David Bowie, whom Boland had come to know in the underground days. Bolan had played guitar on Bowie's 1970 single, Prettiest Star. Bolan and Bowie shared the same manager, Les Conn, and producer, Tony Visconti. 
but their friendship was also a rivalry which continued throughout his career. Bowie's 1972 song All the Young Do's name checked T-Rex. Bowie's song Lady Stardust is generally interpreted as alluding to fellow glam rock icon Mark Bolan. The original demo version was entitled He Was Alright, a song for Mark. Mark Bolan died aged 29 from injuries sustained when his purple mini, driven by his girlfriend Gloria Jones, crashed. Jones lost control of the car and it struck a steel reinforced chain link fence post and came to rest against a sycamore tree after failing to negotiate a small humpback bridge near Gypsy Lane on Queen's Ride Barnes, South West London. From the day of the accident, the site became a place for pilgrimage to Bolan fans and this was reported in various newspapers from 1978 onwards. Coincidentally, the registration number of the car was Fox 661L and within the lyrics of his single Sold, Solid Gold Easy Action are the lines Easy as picking foxes from a tree and woman from the east with her headlights shining. In September 1997, the Performing Rights Society, PRS, installed a memorial stone for bowling facing into Gypsy Lane at the base of the embankment from the Bolan Tree, located in Queen's Ride. In 1999, the T-Rex Action Group, TAG, was formed with the specific aim of caring for the site. TAG were granted an in perpetuary lease on the site with ownership and full responsibility for the Bolan Tree during 2000. TAG built steps up the muddy embankment between the Bowland Tree on Queen's Ride and the PRS Memorial Stone facing Gypsy Lane and took the action needed to make the tree safe so that the threat of falling was removed. In 2002, a bronze bust of Bowland paid for exclusively by T-Rex Action Group founder Fee Warner and sculpted by Canadian sculptor Jean Rob Robillard was unveiled by Bowland's only child, Roland Bowland. In 2005, memorial plaques were fitted to the steps to remember other members of T-Rex who have also died. Steve Peregrine Took, Steve Curry, Mickey Finn and Dino Dines. A memorial plaque was also included for Mark Bolan's wife, June Bolan, knee child, as recognition for her contribution towards his success. Respectful mem memory of musician, writer, poet, Mark Bolan, 30th September 1947, 16th September 1977. Donated by Performing Rights Society in recognition of his outstanding contribution to British music. Some weirdo guy there just looking at me in a van for some reason, I don't know. Plenty of little memorial plaques down here and then they've got one to each one of the band that played with Mark there. Stephen Peregrine Took, Peregrine, sorry, Took, Steve Curry, June Bolan, Nee Child, Mickey Finn and of course this wonderful plaque here Mark Bolan, 25th anniversary, 16th September 2002. Sad to see them mourning you when you are here within the flowers and the trees, donated to TAG by Fee Warner. And then of course up here, look, so many amazing memorial pictures, people have left. 
obviously such a well-loved musician, very talented as well. And you think about it, he could have been up there with Bowie if he'd have carried on. Well, he was in his early days, you know, but if he'd have still been around and had the full career that he should have, who knows? And of course, the tree which was there, which has now been taken down, because it was along this part of the road here that there was a like a boundary which then went on and the car went into the tree subsequently from there. But it's quite some wind chimes. It's quite peaceful around here. Quite chilled, quite relaxed. Quite spiritual and really enlightening to be honest with you. Lots of bugs too. So there we have it there, the um, memorial site to Mark Bolan. And uh, bless you, Mark, you should have had such a longer career. Um, tragically cut so short, which is a shame. And, um, you know, it's a shame when any younger person has their life cut short. But, um, you know, if they've got all the attributes and all the abilities to go on and have a good career and do some good for the music industry or entertainment industry or whatever industry they're in it doesn't matter um, then obviously it just you know you just always wonder what if when you look at all the other musicians around their time so there you go Mark Boland's memorial site beautiful and it's so great what the the organisations have done there um, and it's good to see it's kept respectful uh, it's not too over the top and in the same breath um, you know people come along and pay their respects which is great and then they just leave which is cool and that's what you should do with these sort of places leave them as you find them the only thing you should leave is footprints and the only thing you should take is photographs so remember that um, yeah so there we have it Mark Molan's memorial site Anyway, that's it for me today. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. Uh, I know there's plenty of you Mark Boland fans out there. Of course he is cremated and he's at uh, his ashes. Um, but gold is green, but there's a, um, a bench for him as well, I believe. So uh, I will get there soon as well. But I just wanted to show you the memorial site first. Anyway, I will see you all on the next one. Take it easy. Thank you.